Hello and welcome to Filmy Ladies. It is part a million and five of our Kapoor series and we have reached generation four. So that means it's time for Charisma Kapoor or Karishma Kapoor or however she pronounces her name. I don't even know and neither does Pitu. Um, I have a very hard time not starting off this with one of my favorite Charisma Kapoor songs, or maybe my very favorite, in which she starts the song with, hi, do you love music? So do I, which I just think is the funniest, 90 esque kind of thing I've ever seen, which what is from- What song is this? It's from Poppy Gudia, the, the oh, horror film. Uh, oh, yes. I think it's just called Music or I Love Music or something like that. I don't think that was one of the first songs of hers I saw, but when I saw it, that became the indelible Charisma Kapoor image for me. And I'm sure she would not be happy to hear that, but I, well, I, mean, I don't I'm know. Sexy, 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 mujhe log bole. So. Right, right. So, I, you know, I think as I've stated, I don't have particularly strong feelings about her. I don't have particularly expansive knowledge or experience with her. I, after rewatching two films for this and kind of thinking about it, I have sort of a benign non-interest. Okay. Right? Like she does not compel me. Maybe I haven't seen the right things for sure. That's an option. Um, it doesn't help that the era she's in is one that I hate. Um, she's another of these women that I would say, oh, poor Charisma Kapoor, right? She's yeah. starring across some people I just don't like. I know some people really like AJ Devgan. I'm not one of them. Like no. I just, or Sunil Shetty or some of those people. I just don't, um, there's nothing about what she's doing that draws me with the exception of some songs, right? She's obviously mm -hmm. really, really fun in songs and there's the family legacy if nothing else, right? The the ability yeah. to sell a song. Um, and I just, uh, I kind of thought I might walk out of my research phase of this kind of having a stronger opinion or sense of something but I but I just didn't but it's not yeah. it's not malicious like I don't hate her I just uh and it's not even that I don't get it I don't think like uh, she seems good but yeah. I'm not interested you know what right. I mean what are your general thoughts and feelings about Okay, so Madam. you know how in corporate America, people like, you know, when you have your job review or whatever, it's like exceeds expectations or right. like fails expectations or meets right. expectations. Lolo, because I, I do not, I don't know if her name is Karasma or Karishma. I don't know how to spell it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know if she knows either because she's been quite inconsistent about it. So I'm just going to say Lolo because that's Lolo. easier. Yeah. To me, Lolo meets expectations. Yeah. Right. Like she's yeah. not an exceeds expectations. She's not someone that um, like I don't actually know any Lolo fans. I think we have one uh, subscriber to our podcast who is a Lolo fan who has been watching her films and had actually asked us if Murder Mubarak had a big enough Lolo role for them to watch it. And I was like, no, oh. I was but like, I haven't you want to watch it, it yet. Yeah. No. So they've been watching her older movies, I think. I see. OK, so. I don't actually know any Lolo fans in real life, but like also I don't hate her. Yeah. Um, so I am also kind of like mad towards her. Yeah. Mostly I would say I just enjoy her presence in the David Thaman movies because sure. I watch those for Govinda. I'm watching them uh -huh. for him and she is fine. She is also <laughs> there. <laughs> she's also there and she's she's more than fine. Like she's yeah, nice. Yeah. She matches him in the in the songs, like yeah. with her choreography and everything. Because if someone thinks that, you know, being able to match Govinda is an easy feat, no. Yeah. I've seen him in other films. I like Govinda a lot, so I've seen a lot of his comedies. And he's done a movie with, I think, with Shilpa Shirodkar. He's done one with like Shilpa Shetty. Like he's done it with other people, and they're terrible in comparison. So Govinda and Shilpa Shirodkar, I was just like, oh no, no. Well, <laughs> Govinda. And Karishma is so good. Yeah. And the movie that I saw today, actually, um, I watched Sajan Jali Sasural, which is a David Dhawan movie. Mm -hmm. And I had seen it ages ago. It's not one of my favorite David Dhawan films, which is why I don't like know it by heart. Um, and that is why I decided. Also, it has the added bonus of having tabu in it. And I'm always oh, yeah. down for a tabu. Yeah. yeah, but here's the funny thing, right? So I watched this movie because I knew that the combination of David Dhawan and Govinda would be a good time. And I was like, well, okay, I've got tabu. So this is a great cheating way for me to get my Karishma movie in. 
But I actually thought Karishma was spades better than Tabu. Oh, I believe because, that. Yeah. Right. Because here's the thing. Tabu looked so awkward and right. out of place. Like she yeah. was trying. Yeah. But you could see that the slapstick comedy and the silliness and the goofiness does not come naturally to her. Can Tabu outact Karishma Kapoor oh, any yeah. day of the week? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But in that setting, yeah. wearing those goofy clothes and making the goofy faces and having a gala old time and just making everything effortless and fun and bubblegummy, Karishma was totally the star oh, yeah. of that film. Yeah. So I watched the movie and had a greater appreciation for Karishma. <laughs> I, I think Karishma is actually like just a more successful version of her mother, to be honest. Because to me, Babita oh, occupied the same place in her era. Yeah. You know? And I feel like I have the same fondness for Babita and Karishma Kapoor. Where I'm, okay. I don't love either of them. Yeah. But I just associate them with like frothy outfits, a mm-hmm. lot of pink, puffy sleeves, curls, and like a good time. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, also, I wanted to uh, make like when you were telling me about how you, you're not super familiar with her filmography and you were like, I haven't seen like her best movies or something you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've actually seen the three movies that get touted as her best films all the right. time. Like, and thank you to the com- the listener who commented for me on last week's episode about what yeah. I should watch. I was like, oh, I've seen all those. <laughs> it's the trifecta <laughs> of Zubeda. Fiza and Ditta Pagal Head that always comes up where yeah. they're like, if you want like the song and dance commercial routine, Ditta Pagal Head, she's great in that. She won a national award for it. Uh, and then they're like, if you want the serious one, then there's Fiza. And then if you want like a period drama directed by no less than Shaman Nigel, there's Abeda. So that's that trio that always gets trotted out and she's fine. But again, it's not that great. Yeah. So, Yeah. And um, I, before we kind of finish our assessment, I want to, I do want to say that I can fully accept that there is something, that there's a lot of work, a lot of work that goes into being, showing up in some of these kinds of films, especially these nineties, either kind of more comedy oriented masala or what I imagine are some of the more action oriented ones where, again, where the woman is like, never going to have much to do anyway. So that's not a, that's not a non-achievement, right? Like that's not a small thing. And I read, I forget what I was reading. Maybe this was just in Wikipedia where there was a quote from her saying like, nobody gave me the credit for what I was doing when I was just 17 years old. And I can believe that. I can definitely believe that. And it is the fate of so many women stars and, and women character actors and stuff in a lot of these kinds of films where, no matter what they do, it's going to be underappreciated in general, not by Mm -hmm. birds and whatnot. But um, so I I do want to say that. And I, you know, for all I know, she is or was at the time the hardest working woman in Hindi cinema, right? Or something like that. I I genuinely don't know. She certainly makes more of an impression on me than some of her peers, not all, but some. So like, would I take charisma over Ravina Tandon? Oh, yeah, for sure. (laughs) Oh, I love Ravina. <laughs> I don't dislike Ravina, but I enjoy charisma more for sure. Yeah. So there's a few kind of instances like that, but I don't enjoy her nearly as much as I enjoy Ermila, for example. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, and she is in so many of the things I have seen, maybe Dilto Pagalhai kind of is the exception, girlish as we've always talked about before. So we have girl versus woman and she's leaning more girl. She is very young. She's very yeah. young in some of these. So that is not her fault. Again, these are roles that she is offered and things like that. So sometimes that doesn't make as much of an impression on me. And maybe that's just me. Like that's not her fault. It's just, I prefer I something think... a little more gravitas or yeah. gravitas, like presency or something. Just something with more substance, I think. Because yeah. I get what you're, what, you're, what you're saying, because I feel the same way about, say, like Preeti Zanta versus Karishma. Preeti Zanta mm-hmm. also essentially made a career out of playing girls rather than women. But here's the thing. She often played girls who were in situations that required almost an adult 
Yeah. Maturity. The For context example, is more Anna. interesting. Right. Yeah. Like there's Kya Kena. She's a teenager. Yeah. She's also an unwed mom. What is she right. going to do? That is interesting. But Karishma yes. never really broke out of that. I think one thing that she got a lot of flack for, deservedly so I have to say, is her voice. I mean, people call Juhi mm-hmm. Chawla healing voice and Karishma's voice pre-makeover and pre-grooming was grating. Interesting. Um, yeah, like there's that scene in Raja Hindustani that was like during oh. the blogging days, everyone used to make fun of where she opens the door and she says, Raja, Raja Hindustani. And I'm like, what is this horrible, breathy thing you're doing? It's very Marilyn Monroe-esque and I cannot stand Ooh. it. And she got a lot of flack for it. Interesting. Which, to, which I don't think, despite all of Preeti Zinta's quote-unquote bubbliness and whatever, mm-hmm. I don't think she ever did that. Like she always spoke and, you know. But that also makes me wonder to what extent was Karishma just sort of like a, sort of a victim of her times? Because yeah, I've yeah. seen so I many- I suspect a lot. Yeah, I've seen so many interviews of her now, and she's actually super smart. She's mm. very well spoken. She also has a much deeper voice. So I wonder if it's almost like that same like whole Paris Hilton thing going on, where Paris Hilton put on this completely fake, breathy voice, but she actually yeah. didn't sound anything like it. Yeah. Um, I will say also kind of have like a little bit of a soft spot for Karishma mm. because I think she came in at a time where the Kapoor last name meant absolutely zilch Mm. she did not receive the red carpet big nepo banner production this this launch opposite another newcomer who was nothing like and the movie is what frame kedi and the like who's even heard like what yeah whereas just a few years later like i mean you see her own sister karina get this big jp datta movie refugee with abhishek bachchan amitabh zonsan and then you see ranbir kapoor get savaria opposite so like Sanjay Lila Vansali, nobody was rolling out the red carpet yeah. for this woman. That's and interesting. To a large extent, her, I think, struggle was on par with what an outsider struggle would be because I really don't think that any kind of chips were cashed about being a Kapoor, you know? Because if they were, why why didn't she get any sort of big banners? I mean, her filmography, if you see the the first few films that she's done are absolutely with like, no name people and there's also a lot of b great stuff in there including papi guria oh yeah yeah there's a lot of movies of hers that have song numbers that are extremely like sexually exploitative mm. and none of those safety nets that nepo babies have she didn't have any of those so there's a part of me that has a soft spot for her that yeah. feels a little bit bad for her. However, it is nothing that outsiders have not gone through. So there's right. a limit to how much sympathy I can have. But I do feel bad for her. So the two things. One, the Kapoor bio, which is quite mm-hmm. short about her. And it was written in what, like 07, 08 or something. So, you know, there's not a lot to say. Uh, it covers her marriage, you know, falling apart, basically. Mm. So quickly. I had forgotten that was so fast. Um, it says, it mentions, um, you know, her blue eyes may have played against her. <laughs> and they, I they think talk sure. about, they talk about Karan Kapoor in, in mm-hmm. that sense. They're like, he too had that problem. And I was like, his problem was he couldn't act. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't want to downplay expectations of what looks are. Yeah. But I think the bigger problem with him is probably he is among the most wooden people to have appeared on he, Hindi he cinema is. screens. Um, among maybe the most wooden, honestly, for a hero yeah. of, that I've seen. Um, sorry. In Shashi. fact, he's like a perfect <laughs> example of pretty privilege. Because right. someone, unless right. he looked the way he did, there's no way that guy would even make it through an audition, leave alone get any amount of movies. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, So there's that. And then also a thing I read in the bio that I don't think I knew was that it was talking about her wedding. And it said that Rishi came, but Nitu and the two kids did not. Mm -hmm. What's that about? So as far as I know, based on like all the gossip I've read over the years or discussed with people, um, Randhir Kapoor was an absolutely horrific husband and father right and he was an alcoholic and he wasn't earning any money and he was just useless and babita of course was not allowed to act so she it's not like she was bringing in an income right so she was essentially the only kapoor bahu who stood up for herself and walked out the door with her two kids which kudos to her however that also meant that the kapoor family essentially withdrew their support from her this is one of the things that 
understandably, we don't know these people. They're celebrities. This right. is all gossip. And this is a parasocial relationship. But this is one of the things that I've always kind of felt like Neetu Singh is like an incredibly shady person for this. Because <laughs> Neetu chose to stay in that toxic yeah. marriage with her husband. Yeah. And she also hated on Babita for being able to walk out. So Babita is essentially persona non grata. Mm -hmm. And Randir Kapoor has accepted in his own interviews that he was a terrible father and he did not support his wife and children. So essentially, Babita raised these two kids by herself. Karish, Karina has said so in interviews yeah. as well. like Because yeah. they were never formally divorced. And right. so I don't think there was any alimony or anything happening. Karishma used to take the train to college and things like that. And there was no support, which is also why the... I mean, it basically sounds like the Kapoor's basically ostracized Babita for the mm -hmm. great sin and crime of walking out on a useless husband. So it's um, interesting that even at the wedding, which I gather the family did bankroll, um, mm -hmm. that it wasn't, it still wasn't kind of important enough for me to, and I mean, the kids, kids don't make these decisions as much, right? But like and for then, me to, to come, like Rishi would come for his brother, but his wife wouldn't come for his, because for that her was in laws, that yeah, because there was just that much beef, apparently. Huh. Um, maybe Nita was like, She's the one that got away, why does she get to live with that? Yeah, I mean, you man? do have to wonder, like, uh, you know, what does we often hate what is most similar to ourselves mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, right? So, is that is that going on? And I, I'm beginning to feel bad about all the gossip, but <laughs> it yeah. is, it is, it is interesting to, but the opposite observe. also happened when Rishi and Nita's daughter, Radhima Sahani got married. Um, Babita and her daughters didn't attend that either. Right. And when Karishma got married and moved to Delhi, which is also where Radhima Kapoor uh, Sahani used to live, there was an interview where she was asked, so now that you've moved to Delhi and your first cousin lives there, Rishi's daughter, do you guys like hang out and stuff? And she basically said, no, not really. <laughs> And I was like, cool. Um, there was so, a brief passage. Know. There's a brief passage in the book about um, how she she seems to have found Delhi society fairly impenetrable, and that mm. is very interesting to think about because even as a you know tourist, basically to India, even I can see some of the differences between Delhi society, yeah, um, ways and Bombay society ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is fascinating to observe. Uh, and I yeah. can imagine that you could be a huge film star and you're like, mm, you're not a politician or a, or a yeah. scholar slash journalist slash something like that. Then like, <laughs> I don't even know if the, I, I mean, there's all these subsets, right? So I right, think right. the smallest subset would be the scholars and the journalists. Oh, yeah. Mostly yeah. Delhi people just worship money. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a fan of that city or its populace. I'm just gonna say it. There's some of the most money obsessed. That that's it's kind of a different. Obsessed. It's different, right? Like it's a different kind of business and money that seems to be of interest because it's it's basically just. But snobbing. Bombay has a like, lot of business too, right? Like Bombay has been an international yeah, but Delhi is just for a long like time and it's, whatever. Weird snobbery that doesn't even make sense. Like Radhima yeah. Kapoor Sahani is part of like the Hoi Palai yeah. or whatever, but she's Rishi yeah. Kapoor's daughter too. So yeah. I don't know. I just feel like Karishma was probably, I don't know, maybe she was just black. She's not classy enough in a way, right? Or or maybe sophisticated is the more appropriate. I mean, word I've always or, found I, her I don't know. incredibly sophisticated. Like Obviously. But people assumed that she wasn't, right. maybe because she's a film right. person or whatever. Or and she, she is maybe one of the person. she's maybe one of the last examples of film society being looked down on mm, in certain yeah. circles, even though so many of the rest of the country and the world worships these people. Um, yeah. but there and and we saw that in her character in in Murder Mubarak, right? That she, yeah. you know, really had to struggle for that election at the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also with Karishma, there were just so many rumors about her that I don't know who spread, but there were a lot of rumors about her. There was there was a lot of B-grade stuff that she also has done, like borderline kind yeah. of B-grade films that she did. She just did not have the prestigious filmography that yeah. Karina later had. And that is absolutely not her fault. I mean, if she's no. going to do the kind of movie she gets, right? And so yeah. many times it took her so long, despite being a Kapoor, to finally become a YRF heroine. And yeah. at least in Bollywood, you've made it if you're a YRF heroine. And she essentially, it took her forever to get there. Um, I mean, six years, right? That's not... 
which for someone who was acting as much as she was, she was working triple shifts, she said in interviews. Like she would start shooting at eight in the morning Mm -hmm. and work until five and then take a break and then go to the other side of the town to shoot at another studio to work from five onwards until one in the morning. When this woman slept, I have no idea. Yeah, that's horrible. When she ate, I have no idea. I mean, she was Mm -hmm. just working around the clock. And it does seem like there were a lot of financial problems at home that she had to kind of like help support her mom and her sister. Yeah. So I, I don't know, like as as much as I'm not a Karishma Kapoor fan of her films, I will always have a soft spot for her because I, I feel bad for her. Yashraj also isn't making a ton of movies in that stretch though. It's it's interesting. Like so you have Lamhe in ninety one Aina in 93, Dar in 93, Ye Diligi in 94, which she could have been in, right? There's a role mm-hmm. for her in that. She could have been, I don't think she could have carried Dar. Um, no. And DDLJ, I don't really see her carrying that either in, in 95, and then it's 97, and then she's in one. So what yeah. they're doing does not align well with her where she she is, wasn't a dharma but, heroine either right and no one's making a movie for her. No, these people are not right. making a movie for her to cast her yeah. in it whereas yeah. how many movies has karan johar written thinking of kajol as right. his protagonist like right. you know what i mean i mean preeti zinta despite being a complete outsider has gotten far more like fancy labels on yeah. her resume than karishma does you're making me think would i rather watch Kajal or charisma in something and it kind of depends on what it is I think but I might find charisma to be more fun honestly but but yeah and that's mostly a song issue like I don't think Kajal is bad in songs but I think charisma is more fun much better yeah <laughs> I, I don't know yeah this is again at this era and I we just don't we just don't get along you don't gel <laughs> um can we talk about one of her prestige projects such that it is which is Zubeda which I did rewatch mm. for this um I watched this very early on in my, you know, Indian film journey. And I remember being kind of like about it. And I remain hmm, about it. Uh, it might be Benegal's least good that I've seen. Same. I haven't seen all I his agree. films. I'm, I'm underwhelmed, frankly. I'm underwhelmed by the music. Mm-hmm. Unusual for who wrote it. I love Lilette Dubé, but I don't think this is her best. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Ray again, Reka, I enjoy in it very much because of the yeah. Um, <laughs> but is this another? This is obviously a girl, and that's part right. of the point. Is this? And then there's that whole song about she's a puppet on a string, and mm-hmm. um, but she is also petulant and bratty and doesn't think very far ahead, if at all. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe that's because she's young and naive. So, like, is she naive? And it's is she is she foolish? And I'm not sure I decided on one or the other. And she can be both, right? But I I just I just so often wanted to intervene into the film and say, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not charisma's fault. But then when I did try to think about the performance, I felt like most of the people who were her contemporaries could have done this. It's interesting yeah. that she was in it. Um I don't know. And there's the, the, you know, this whole film kind of builds to this ending of her son getting to watch her dance on film because it's the only moving image of her that he will Mm -hmm. ever, a moving memory that he will ever get to have. And I didn't think it was that great of a dance performance, (laughs) but also I don't think it was that interesting of a, of a choreographed piece, right? Like if, if you need your, heroine to be immortalized as a free spirit which they were emphasizing a lot as far as I could Mm -hmm. tell and sort of a magical fairy and all this that was not the song to do it I don't think Mm -hmm. but what film what kind of film song could they have had her made for the 1940s right that that would have captured that better but there's got to be something like I'm sure we've seen Nargis like run around in a fairly girlish role that it song that would have been a better example of that for this person to have been like fossilized in or whatever. Mm-hmm. Also, the frack you do in casting Shakti Kapoor as the dance master and putting him in age makeup and stuff. Like, I didn't think he was bad, but why? Right. Why was he there? Um, I thought Manoj Bajpayee was, was 
good. But again, I felt like that could have been anyone. Yeah. Um, Raja Kapoor, I thought was good, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, this is a real head scratcher of a movie. And I, I'm glad for her that she got the opportunity, I guess, but I don't, that's it's not just her, I mean, like, this doesn't add to her legacy for me at all. Lumbering. It's a very yeah. lumbering, yeah. sleep-inducing movie. I personally don't get the Zubeda love. Mm -mm. I have a feeling people say nice things about Zubeda because it's pretty. Just pretty. And she looks pretty and the costumes yes. are pretty, which yes. is essentially the same compliments that Bansali movies get. Right. Um. And if I'm going to watch a Benegal movie, there are like 15 million better films I can see. I'm not watching this one. I don't even think Amrish Puri is very good in it. I have to be honest. He's I don't remember him in really it. really phoning it in as overbearing father to me. Because mm. we have seen him in, you know, Kaliog, for example. Yeah. <laughs> it's much better. His role is very different. But I just... I don't know. This is kind of a nothing burger of a film to me. Yeah, she's I mean, and she's fine, but again, yeah, like she's fine. I don't. She's not bad, but like no. again, could someone else have done that role? Yes, yes. <laughs> for sure. I think others I think could have so. done it. Yeah, and then same thing with like Fiza. Have you seen Fiza? Oh yeah, you have seen Fiza. No, I haven't. I that's okay. the one I thought about it, and I was like, man, that sounds depressing. I don't want to. Watch. It is. It has really Roshan <laughs> in it, and yeah. has great songs. Sure. Um, again, she's fine in it. Javachan is fine in it. Javachan is the mother who's crying mm. all the time, and Karishma is the sister who's like whatever, and she's fine. But again, I don't see Karishma as some sort of like crusader person anyway, and I don't mm. know. She's okay in that. Um, weirdly, I think the movie in which I like Karishma is actually a movie that no one really talks about. It's called Shakti the Power and it's terrible. And I do I not thought about you watch trying it. that one, but I, I was like, no, oh, not even for Shahrukh am I gonna do this? I don't need to see Not Without My Daughter. No, it is avoid, avoid Yar. Um, and Shahrukh's role in it is very small anyway. And you, if you want your Shahrukh film, just watch Ishkamina, the item song he's done with Ishwarya. They both look great. They're on fire. It's amazing. Um Ironically, that's actually the movie that she's acted her best in because she's actually mm. done a good performance. And for her to hold her own in scenes with Nana Bhatekar going yeah. at full blast is yeah. in itself a great achievement. I can believe she it. also has some very tender moments with Deepthi Naval, who plays mm. the, the kind mother-in-law. It's so bizarre, though. Very. But... Deepthi Naval, okay, that whole family is weird. Okay, so Nana Patekar is the father. His wife is Deepthi Naval. Their son is Sanjay Kapoor. Explain this to me. And then he marries Karishma and their child is a child that has these bright... I, I don't even understand this. I don't understand the casting. In this movie, Deepthi Naval looks about like 20 years younger than Nana Patekar, which she probably isn't, but you know. No, she couldn't possibly um, be, I don't think. <laughs> but... Like her scenes with Deepthi Novel are nice too, where they okay. make for some like, you know, where Deepthi Novel is like actually a nice person. Um, having said that, the movie is a dumpster fire. <laughs> it is very bad. It is very triggering. And it is just nonstop, unendingly violent from start to finish. So I don't recommend watching it. Yeah. But I that think... is probably Karishma's best performance according to me. Interesting. Um, and then... I do agree with the people who say that she was great in Dilta Pagal Hai. I yes. do think she was amazing yes. in it. Yes. Having said that, I will still say that Urmila should have done that role. Yes. Because Urmila is a better dancer than her. Urmila has more oomph than her. Urmila is more beautiful. Urmila is everything Karishma into 20. Do you think 20, that Urmila, she have been there. the contrast between Urmila and Madhuri would not have been as great and therefore kind of less effective as a competitors kind of I mean you make a good point I wonder because, if that's part of it yeah right that could be it yeah now that you're thinking about it like Urmila was even kind of known for having those same like soft waves like even her hair was like yeah. Madhuri mm, yeah. yeah maybe maybe Karishma but still I do think that Urmila would have been better than her um but Karishma is good in that movie mm -hmm. I do like her in that movie mm -hmm. that's the only one where I agree where she's like very good and then I really like her in Shakti, but everything else is kind of like, okay, but she is good in the David Dhawan film. She's a yeah. fun watch. Um, ironically, the, the most memorable comment I've ever heard anyone make about Karishwa Kapoor 
came from my mother-in-law. Okay. So my mother-in-law, um, she's since passed, but she was a she was a doctor. She was an MD, an anesthesiologist, and she had practiced medicine in India, Nigeria, Kenya. Incredibly wow. accomplished woman, wow. right? Like she navigated all these um, medical. She had like license medical licenses. Every she was great, and wow. she practiced medicine until like past 70 almost because she was a consulting anesthesiologist and she essentially dressed like you would imagine a working mom would right like she mostly wore like chinos and like cotton shirts that she would buy from like fab india and she had a short crew cut and she would wear like a sensible watch and she wore like orthopedic shoes and then she would go to like her hospital and she would change into scrubs and stuff this is not a woman that i've ever seen with a stitch of makeup on her face wow. or jewelry she would just run her hand through her crew cut all the time and one time we were having tea i was visiting india and we were having tea and she happened to, she was like scrolling through the TV channels. And there was that song um, that Karishma and Govinda have, which is, um, to raste se ja raha tha, to bhel puri kha raha tha, that one. It's from one of the David Dhawan films. And they're doing this incredibly fast dance. Like they're at it. It's like a high tempo number and she's mm. dancing and she's in a sari. She's like in a sari with like a long pallu. And in some of the long shots, you can she's you can see she's wearing like gigantic heels. Because mm. Karishma Kapoor is a very petite person. So she's mm-hmm. wearing like almost like four inch, five inch heels maybe. And she's doing these insane steps with perfect grace and finesse in these five inch heels. My mother-in-law, who has never worn high heels in her life and wouldn't know what to do with them, was like drinking her tea and she goes, wow, that's amazing. And I was like, what, what is amazing? And she goes, how is she able to dance like that? That's some real skill, four inch heels and a long sari. I could never do that. And I was like, you know what? I could never do that too. So props for that. That is not an easy thing to do. Very Ginger Rogers, you know, back in the yeah. heels. Yeah, I have just put this song up. I have seen this song before, but I would not have ever, it would not have come to my mind. But yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. Yeah, but it's she funny, is... like, no, go ahead. It's funny, like, I think those of us who grew up on a steady diet of Bollywood and grew up singing these song and dance, it's incredible how much we sort of take it for granted, you know? Yeah. We just kind of like assume, oh, well, all heroines do that anyway. Why are we going to like mention this person? And we just sort of take that a little bit for granted. And it's really not that easy. I mean, I couldn't walk yeah. two hours in high heels, leave alone dance in them. No, absolutely and it's funny not. that my mother-in-law just mentioned that and I was like yeah you know what props for that I respect you that is that is cool whatever you're doing um also I had to say when I was watching Sajan Chale Sasaral and I like you I also watched some of her old songs on YouTube um and I really think one of the ways that she struggled is that her complexion is so is such an anomaly in mm-hmm. Bollywood. She's not just fair. She's Caucasian fair. Yeah. She has a pink <laughs> undertone. She's blue eyes. I literally, like, I live in California. I'm surrounded by tan people. I have Caucasian friends who are darker than Karishma Kapoor is, mm-hmm. like, and who have, like, an olive undertone. And unfortunately, I think the Bollywood makeup artists at that time just didn't know how to do Did her makeup. Know. Yeah. So I'm watching this movie, Sajan Chale Sasural. She's wearing orange lipstick throughout. Even her bindis are orange and her entire costumes are like yellow and orange. And I'm like, oh my God, color theory 101. This girl has pink undertones. She has a rosy complexion. She has blue eyes. Why are you putting this girl in all of these one She's tones? a they summer. Look... Yeah, she <laughs> looks terrible at them. <laughs> and then that same exact color palette looks phenomenal on Tabu because Tabu looks more like Tabu is Indian fair. She's not Karishma fair, yeah. right? So I think the poor thing, it's like she even struggled with stuff like that where I yeah. think she should have pulled a Helen because Helen mm. in the documentary that we watched was talking about how she got her makeup from abroad that's what Karishma Kapoor should have been doing and And it's interesting to think about right because it's not like images beauty oriented images of white people are hard to find (laughs) even in the 90s right like uh we projected our image a lot of places uh so and and like blue eye is the standard even for you know even in America right like I as a hazel-eyed person with dark hair I was like I don't feel represented by that either (laughs) um but it's it's interesting it is interesting because those references would be not as easily available as they are now but still pretty available and they're also 
lots of white people in Bombay, for example. Right. Like it was still the 90s. So I just look at that and I'm like, oh my God, they've put you in all these terrible things. And I was like critiquing every single outfit she was in. And I was thinking with just a few changes here and there, she could have looked so much nicer. So let's talk about her infamous or famous um, makeover that Manish Malhotra is credited with. I don't, I don't have a, I actually kind of went Googling about that today and I I was looking for a think piece about it, you know, and I didn't find one. Um, I I got distracted by something else and and fell off, but, but. You literally made yourself sound like a cat right now. I was distracted by something and fell off and I was imagining you just like falling off a table. Basically, (laughs) if the internet is a table, I fell off of it. I, I feel bad that this is a thing we all know. Mm-hmm. And that we are choosing to talk about. We mm-hmm. this 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 tension about what should we what kind of emphasis should we put on this with actors weighs on me a lot when I, I find myself mm-hmm. thinking about it and then I feel bad for thinking about it, but then it's complicated. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And especially for women, right? I, I feel bad for her because no matter what any man does to his look, we're never gonna talk about it as much as we are about her or Sadna's oh, bangs yeah. or whatever. And I'm, I know I'm being part of the problem. So I, I just don't know, but it is interesting. And I also want to just say that looking back at some of her pre-makeover stuff, and as I've said, I am less than one month older than Charisma. So I feel like in mm-hmm. terms of like someone whose fashions, um, like makes sense to me, it's going to mm-hmm. be her. Um, and I just, when I look at some of those early things, like that absolute metric ton of hair yeah I love it I love it it's massive in some ways it overwhelms her just sort of thinking about geometry but I love it and how like she parts it all from one side all the way over it's like flying around as she dances I love it (laughs) so yeah and it does help that a lot of 90s stuff has cycled back in like big Mm. brows you know some uh, like the the kind of shag hair and things like that have come back in and the chokers and everything bike shorts and whatever but i i look at it and i feel like it was a taming and that mm-hmm. is not just a makeover it is a taming and why are why must women always be tamed and all this kind of stuff so i i don't this is a complicated topic i cannot abide of pre makeover karishma And it is because the costumes are absolutely hideous. She has worn so many frothy pink ice cream cakes, essentially. Are they worse than what her peers had? Yes, okay, definitely. And I very strongly suspect that her mom had a hand to play in it. Uh, Because Babita famously designed her own costumes. Except here's the thing. Babita is not a trained costume designer. Right, 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 right. And what worked for her body and worked for the times and looked good and continues to look good. Like a lot of Babita's fashions still look good to me. Very dated, but they look good. But that stuff does not look good on Karishma. And enjoying clothes is not the same thing as knowing about film costuming. Those are very different things there's some overlap but like those are very different passions and skills and whatnot (laughs) exactly but so there's so okay so I know the 90s really well right because that's the generation that's the era when I actually started going to like movie theaters by myself and started seeing like you know movies like late 90s and stuff and no none of her contemporaries were dressing like her Mm. to be fair fashion on on film was still very bad it was all hideous, yeah. but hers was particularly hideous. And it was hideous in a very specific way that very much makes me think that Babita had a hat in it mm. because it just it just smacks of a Babita look. So yeah. I very much have a suspicion that, for example, there's these like icy pink lipsticks that she used the to wear. The frosted lipstick. The frosted Ooh. lipsticks. But Ravina wasn't wearing them. Urmila wasn't wearing them. Her Madhuri wears those mom. sometimes. She did wear those as well. Yeah. But Ravina and um, Urmila's outfits in that era are far better than Karishma's yeah. are. I mean, they still have like the crazy more. hair and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So even in a movie, like if you watch Andaz Apna Apna, yeah, yeah. it's Karishma and Ravina together. Ravina's outfits and general makeup and styling is 100 times better than Karishma's. Yeah. And I don't know what happened there. So yeah. was it Karishma and her mom just like, vetoing the makeup man vetoing the, mm. I don't know because the costume yeah. designer is Manish Malhotra for both of them right. and right. yet Ravina gets that iconic yellow chiffon number in the song in the tanga the Eloji Sanam Hum Aage and Karishma gets those bizarre denim cutoffs and the 
loud shirt with the neon polka dots. And I'm like, why is Ravina looking 100 times better dressed than you? Ravina gets like the, the flouncy curls and the Karishma gets the weird pigtails with the bizarre. Oh, I hate those pigtails. Thumb over. I hate yeah, them with so the much. bows in it. It's it's very odd. I mean, in some of its character, but not all. I yeah. Think, right. So I do think her mom had a hand in it because Babita was her sort of like momager. Sure. At that time, she was the one who was really like pushing her in the films. And so I, I do think she has something to do with it. And once Manish Malhotra came into the picture and he kind of like upgraded her wardrobe, I think she looked so much better. He started putting her in colors that were so much nicer. He started pulling, putting her in less crazy and wild things. Mm -hmm. She no longer looked dated. She looked much more fresh. Um, he also like, and I think at some point, I think her makeover must have included things like diction because Raja Hindustani is kind of the last movie where she has that incredibly saccharine, sweet, mm -hmm. childish, kiddie voice. So maybe at some point she was being encouraged to speak in like her natural voice. And maybe being told that's just not working anymore. And maybe she took those hints. Her acting improved. So I don't know. It's like they call it a makeover. But I feel like she just went sort of this transformation in a way that made her a lot more palatable to Indian audiences. And when mm -hmm. she did that, she kind of like took off. And then, so, so that's what, 96, 97? Yeah, whenever so? Raja Hindustani So happened, then she's the... not in films for very much longer than that either. So like- yeah. It's not even half. It's like slightly less than half of her career basically is is this made over. So I rewatched Hero Number One. Ah, okay. So she has it's been a... made over by this point. Yes. And I I was taking special note of her clothes because I, you know, I've I've read about this, obviously. And I again I was like, yeah, I think in 97 I would have really dug these outfits. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's a um, me projecting myself backwards is not particularly useful because obviously things I'm from a different country. I'm from a different culture, whatever. But but even with that aside, like I, I think these outfits would have translated to my 1996 very well. Um, yeah. And it's but not see, quite, these are what was post that? makeover clothes. Though. Right. Right. Exactly. And so, yeah, whoever, so she's in more. Manish Malhotra. And so yeah. see, she's in more neutrals and more sedate stuff, stuff that translates better on screen. Other than some instead of, of the like, loud in some of the she songs, did. she's wearing like gigantic purple, like, I think it's giant billowing pants. And, oh, you know, the camera's zoomed one. in on her midriff. And, but it, hmm. so she's getting some of the same treatment in some ways as, as every heroine, I guess. But yeah. So it's not like, I, I don't I wouldn't call most of her clothing in that movie sedate by any means. Is mm. it sedate for David Dawan? Mm, yeah. <laughs> or compared to Govinda, maybe, but like, you know, she's wearing bright red and bright purple and and, right. and all these things. And her movements are not sedate, right? Like her dancing yes. is definitely not. And it's great. I really thought rewatching that film was going to be a slog. And I enjoyed I enjoyed it actually. I yeah. was surprised how much fun I had with that, especially kind of once it got rolling. Yeah. Um I think you know, you and that's still enjoy the Hasina Manjai if you haven't seen it. I it have has, not seen that, but yeah, it has I Karishma considered... Govinda and Sanjay Dutt, and it's one yeah. of my most quoted films. I and it's still that era where when Indian actors are in Switzerland, all the people in the background yes. are like, <laughs> but even you know, they she and Govinda, man, they are so great, even with the distraction yeah. of these terrible people. In the, oh God, I wish they could have like cleared all those people out because they're so <laughs> annoying with their gawking, like embarrassing for those yeah. for all those silly tourists and Swiss people or whatever. But I can also understand not knowing what in the heck had hit you if you yeah. the classic Govinda song sequence being filmed. So I get it. But she's, I, you know, that's, it's not her film, obviously. It's yeah. Govinda's film. But I thought she held her own really well. They are fun together. Mm -hmm. You know, no newsflash there. But they, I thought she really did quite a good job yeah that, even even when what she had to do was not the the point of the film but she held her own she was appropriate all the time appropriate to the film I don't mean like right demure <laughs> or anything uh she looks great in all her different outfits you know I really and that film is fun because Qatar Khan is a good guy which I always enjoy oh, when he I gets know. to be the good dad you know he's so sweet he's in Sachin Chali as they, well and there's that, a scene where so he's Tabu's dad and uh, Tabu's like uh uh 
daddy, why don't you come with me? I want to go sari shopping. And he's like, you're so big. Like, why do you need your dad to go sari shopping with you? And she's like, well, That's I cute. just do. And I'm like, yeah, because you're Kadir Khan and you're cute. And of course she wants you to go sari shopping with him. He's He always makes me smile when he's on screen. Like, yeah, yeah he's sweet. Um, yeah, these yeah, are all I, like typical David Dhawan casts, right? Like there's always yeah. Govinda, Kadir Khan, Satish Kaushik. Yeah. Um, the heroine is often, but not always Karishma. But the 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 most iconic David Dhawan Govinda films are definitely the ones that have Karishma in them. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's the kind of thing where I know this doesn't exist anymore, but when we were younger and you're home on a weekend afternoon and you just want to watch some TV and so you flip around and like had I landed on that, I think I would have been happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I probably wouldn't go out of my way to watch more of these, but mm-hmm. if I get them assigned for myself for a podcast or you know, if, right. if whatever that TV, if there's one on a plane. <laughs> Yeah, um, there probably isn't anymore. But if there were, um, yeah, so in, good, good time pass. In India, on Star Plus or on Z Cinema, they would play a lot of these David Dhawan movies. Sure. So if you were just like channel yeah, flipping, you exactly. would often find a little bit of that. You'd be like, oh, okay, I'll wait yeah. for the song, and there's a little bit. Okay, fine. I'm like moving on already. And but it wasn't were, as like ubiquitous broad as I was remembering. Yeah. I feel mm-hmm. like I had kind of thought these were, or at least this one. I had seen it more than 18 years ago and not revisited it since. So of course I don't remember right. it, but, but it, um, yeah, I, I, it was much more, it was more palatable than the recent Cooley number one, for example. Oh, so. I have no idea why David Thoman insists on remaking his films. Like he made Judwa as well. And I'm like, why? The original was good. I and enjoyed the new Judwa. Have sorry, you seen the I, old Judwa? no. I don't think so. Is very good. I mean, two Salmans, that's a lot. <laughs> He's actually very funny in that movie. And I'm not a Salman Khan fan. So trust. It is, I, it is I thought about watching that movie. and I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And the songs in that one are amazing. Like Chalti Hai Kya No Se Bara yeah. and all of those. Or Dunya I've seen some of the songs, yeah. Yeah, really good. Um, yeah, but I like David Dhawan and Varun need to like stop with like, don't, you know, don't mess with it. It's, it's. It's yeah, good. Let it be. Just do something you. else. Yeah. Especially when Varun Dhawan is so talented. Yeah. Like, why do you want to keep doing slapstick? Do like do more movies like October and you know, or at least Lady do Anne, some Bandapur. new slapstick. Like, yeah. make up a new film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ideally, not for Janvi Kapoor, but. <laughs> mm. <gasps> okay, let's get to. Okay, here's the whole thing with her name, right? So I had once read an interview in which Raj Kapoor said that um, Karishma Kapoor is basically a premature baby. She was a preemie. So when she was born, she was kept in the incubator. And there were some moments that were a little bit touch and go. And the whole family Mm -hmm. was very stressed out. So when she was finally like declared fine and healthy to go home. Raj Kapoor said he would like to name her Karishma because Karishma literally means miracle, which is such an adorable story. That's very sweet. It's adorable. And then it it, like, what a great name origin story to have. Yeah. And then in every interview of hers that I have read, Karishma Kapoor has basically said that her name is actually Karishma Kapoor, like the English word charisma Mm -hmm. except it's not spelled c-h-a it's spelled k-a-r-i-s-m-a so it's we're supposed to believe it's charisma but also it's spelled with a k and there's no h in it and that's what she says her name is and i'm like i do not believe that also babita is sindhi and Cindy's eat um, um, a sweet, it's like a round pancakey thing, and it's called uh, Miti Loli. I, I have a lot of Cindy friends, so I've eaten Miti Loli many times. And in an interview, Babita had said that her pet name for Karishma when she was growing up was Lolo because she was sweet and like Miti Loli. And then in another interview, Karishma Kapoor said that she was named Lolo because her mother was a fan of Gina Lolo Brigida. That's what the bio says. Which again, I do not believe. So... I'm going to go out on a limb and say this woman is obsessed with Western validation. Yeah. And there is a part of her that probably wishes that she was actually white instead of just mm. looking white. And I don't for one second believe that she was named Charisma. I don't for one second believe that her pet name is after Gina Lolo Brigida. How many Gina Lolo Brigida movies has Babita watched to be a big fan of her? I find Karishma, the miracle being her name and Lolo being her pet name far more believable. And I think it's kind of lame for someone to be so obsessed with mm. creating this 
almost like westernized identity i just think it's lame i so. wonder you know uh seeing that her father noped out yeah of paying any attention to her and her mom is half white right she's half british um, so i wonder if that's kind of this is a reaction to the kapoor side being kind of shitty to her I, I don't know we, we are getting deep into speculative territory here but yeah, yeah we are yeah. but like it's like Occam's razor right like this is the this is the mm. um this is the explanation Simplest. that makes the most sense to yeah. me you yeah. know yeah mm. and I, I just think it's kind of lame <laughs> more importantly what ice cream flavor is she god bubblegum or birthday cake I mean we've used those already Okay, um, <laughs> strawberry, we've used strawberry already. So um, here's what came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And this is going to Ooh. be, no, you go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say she's actually a cupcake that you eat with a side of ice cream. <laughs> she's not even an ice cream flavor. She's a cupcake. And then you eat like eat it with some ice cream on the side, but you go ahead. <laughs> Well, so this is this said so in light of what you just said, maybe this is very appropriate. So my references are American and I yes. didn't know anything about India in the 90s. But in my corner of the world in the 90s, there were a couple things that were extremely popular flavor wise or food wise. One is Cool Ranch. That is the era of Cool Ranch Doritos. And I mean... I know Cool Ranch Whip and Cool Ranch Doritos, but please do not tell me there was a Cool Ranch ice cream. Oh, no, I'm not aware that there was, oh, but God. I'm just kind of throwing it out there as things that were okay. flavors that were around. Okay. Then Snapple. Snapple mm. is not a flavor, right? But Snapple beverage, like, again, came out of, like, just took over. Everyone mm -hmm. loves Snapple and clearly Canadian, which was kind of the La Croix of its day. Mm -hmm. And then, as anyone who is a fan of Saturday Night Live may remember, clear clear mm. pepsi and there were i believe a couple of other clear products that we were into at okay. the time for things that obviously had had coloring added to them and were supposed to be clear until we made okay. them brown or whatever so can she be a clear snapple cool ranch <laughs> i'm so sorry that sounds vile or like i think sour candy also came to be big in the 90s again oh. in my part of the world so like or like gummy worms could she be yeah could oh, she be like a mean. sour at patch, least a gummy bear a sour patch ice cream <gasps> or something i just hit upon the perfect one okay so when i lived in chicago and whenever we would go to lake geneva i would stop at a dairy queen and we would get the um the strawberry shortcake thing blizzard that strawberry yeah that dairy queen used to have i think yeah. she's that <laughs> a strawberry shortcake blizzard that's also yeah. 90s if i recall those came out in the 90s yeah. so that is to, what she is. i was thinking about to me her um frothiness legacy okay. legacy <laughs> for lack of it it feels like too big a word and i'm sorry that i feel that way but but i do not associate anyone more strongly as only specifically the 90s than i do uh, her yes and i think that's because for me ermila endures a little later Ravina also endures a little bit later in my head i'm not saying it's true i'm just saying this is what i feel and also i don't enjoy her quite as much Mm. And then, you know, Kajal goes on into the 90s. Madhuri also existed in the 80s. Shri Devi, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, like, to me, charisma is 1990s and maybe nothing else. But right. also, that's not small to be a decade. <laughs> yeah. So, to me, it has to be something I, I associate with the 90s. But, as stated, my associations are not culturally relevant, right. probably. <laughs> so, I don't know. What were the big, the big, like, food trends in India in the 90s? Like, she's a, she's an economic opening of the market flavor she is yeah. like coke or pepsi the which one did she advertise which one did she advertise pepsi or I coke i don't even know which one she advertised because sharuk has always advertised pepsi right so she must for some reason i feel like she's pepsi but i don't remember but whichever one of those she is like maybe that's her flavor she is yeah. economic globalization and opening she feels like a mirinda flavor. to me though mm. or a gold spot I don't know. I used to love gold spot. Um, to me, it's so funny. Like to me, the 90s, I kind of club three actresses together because to me, they're kind of interchangeable, not 100%, but kind of sort of like um, one is Karishma. 
Mm-hmm. The other is Ravina, and the third is Sonali Bendre. To me, oh, the three Sonali of them. Bendre. Yeah, but they're all kind of in that same yeah. mold where I kind of know what I'm getting into when I watch their movie. I like them all just fine, but I don't necessarily like love them. Now I right. do like Ravina and Sonali more than I like Karishma, but also I don't mind Karishma. Right. I don't put Urmila in that in that category because I think Urmila is far and away way more talented than they yeah, are. Yeah, she has but, transcended that. Yeah, yeah, but those three are kind of yeah. like sort of neck and neck and yeah. maybe if Amrita Rao had done more movies she and oh, was in yeah. an earlier generation she could kind yeah. of be folded into that um but to me the 90s are like those three actresses sort of like blended together a trimurti if you will mm-hmm. <laughs> a fashionable trimurti of Ravina Karishma and Sonali Bendre um so what's interesting is when we decided, when we came up with our list of our superstars and we had said that we were going to do an episode on Karishma Kapoor and then it would cross over also as a Kapoor series episode and then we're going to do one for Bebo as well. In my mind, Karishma, Ravina and Sonali are kind of the same. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we're doing a superstar episode on either Ravina or Sonali. Yeah. So what do you makes Karishma a superstar when they aren't, given that they all kind of sort of have a similar skill set? Um, I'm not sure that I would call her a superstar. Okay. Actually, the more that I've thought about it, it's her surname. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Snapple baby privilege. Right. Um, because even if she fades, the fact that she's a Kapoor will not. Yes. And it doesn't seem to have helped her very much, interestingly, which the book does talk about a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. But it does prop up. It is not the only prop up to her legacy such that it is, but it is there. And we can't, you know, there's a reason she didn't go by just one name. Yeah. (laughs) You chose to use that last name. Yeah. It's also interesting because I feel like that generation of Napa babies, um, like, you know, Karishma, Karina, Abhishek Bachchan, Hrithik Roshan. I feel like that was kind of the last generation where you really did ha- need to have talent beyond a famous surname to actually make it in the movies and to continue at least getting movies. Mm-hmm. And then eventually it changed to the point that now you can be, you know, anyone from the Surinder Kapoor Khandan and you can just keep churning out the Arjuns and the Jadvis and the Shanayas and we just have to watch them. Um, so I think in that era, you still had a huge chance of failing if you just w- couldn't pass muster. And she almost did, it sounds like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it would be interesting to hear from someone who is who is extremely well-versed in her films, whether or not they are a fan, right. um, to say, like, what was it just grit? She just kept going and that... Mm-hmm. But then how did she get the chances to keep going when so many others do not? And is that where Kapoor comes in? I genuinely don't know. I think the fact that she hitched her star to Govinda helped a lot. Uh, yeah. Because That'll that help. is also the secret to Katrina's success. Like Katrina right. hitched her star to Salman early on and then mm-hmm. basically piggybacked on Salman's success, right? Like without having a hit pair with Salman or, you know, I don't think Katrina could have made it either. I think with Karishma, what where she deviated from Ravina, Ravina is not, you know, inseparable from some other actor, right. nor is Sonali Bendre. Right. And both Ravina and Sonali Bendre have hideous chemistry with Shah Rukh Khan. Um, <laughs> But and Urmila also, as much as I love right. Urmila, Urmila did not have a hit. She was not part of a hijodi either. But if you can manage to make it as part of a hijodi, you can go so far in Bollywood where so many movies are romantic movies or comedies to begin with. Right. Like yeah. it's only in action films that being a hit pair doesn't matter. Yeah. So I think the fact that so early on she had this impeccable comic timing and dancing and she was just such a perfect counterpart to Govinda. Yeah. And she presumably could work really well with Govinda and David Dhawan I think that's what catapulted her to if you delete the David Dhawan films from her filmography there's nothing yeah and the to be as you were saying about the counterpoint to Govinda because the point is not to be I can't quite make this math math but the you know it's not to be nothing it's to be just the right presence and that is again that is no small thing yeah to calibrate yourself Mm mm-hmm in that way and to follow whatever direction she was given and whatever to, to make that work. And then really she busts out in those songs that are so fun. They're so fun. Like I found myself 
rewatching multiple times Menepero Seja Rahata. I could oh, not stop I love that. singing that song. And also Purnima's voice with her is like A plus plus yeah. to me. Because mm -hmm. in Zubeda, when she's got the aging, aging superstars voice with her, I'm just like, oh, I hate it so much. I hate yeah. it so much. It's such a terrible match. Uh, but Purnima, I thought was just like amazing with her yeah. and just such a I like mostly associate Karishma presence. with Alka Yagnik. That too. Yeah. Also good. Who I is would also say. very yeah. sugary sweet. Yeah. Um but also in like all of the David Haman films basically what happens is Govinda has the action. Like yeah. I mean like she has to do the actual acting and he has like the fun dialogue and then Karishma reacts. So yeah. it's always like he says it then she reacts. He cracks yeah. a joke she giggles. He teases her she blushes. It's always you know, but in hero number one. So here's the nice thing about it. She has that whole song where she goes after him. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. She's like her mom or her auntie has kind of been like, Hey, Hey, and you know, and she's like, yeah, ah, and she is the one saying, I, you know, you're my hero number one, which is a yeah. fun, a fun twist on that. But yeah, I can easily imagine that generally speaking, that That's velvet outfit of hers, by the way, was in every shop on LinkedIn. Is that the blue, the dark blue, the sort of like a dark plum color. Oh yeah. 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 And um and then isn't Sona Kitna Sona hai also from this? Yeah, yeah I mean that's Tumera hero number one. And she's yeah. wearing some sort of like beret like thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but that velvet, those velvet minis that she used yeah. to wear and also Urmila used to wear. Yeah. Those velvet the men, minis down were, the front. Yeah, yeah. They were everywhere in yeah. Bandra. Like you went to Linking Road, every shop had those. Every mannequin had those. And to this day, like if you go to like those really old, like if you go in some gully and you see some like beauty salon or hair salon that is not like swanky it's like the yeah. neighborhood beauty salon where the aunties yeah. go to get their mehndi done or whatever <laughs> when you go over there there is always a karishwa kapoor in bridal get up photo love it in the window always yeah, i've it. seen so many of those where she's wearing like a ghagra choli and it's clearly like a like a posed picture like a still um advertising she modeled that movie. quite a bit too right so maybe I it's think some so. of them are from those and yeah. so she's wearing this like gungat and stuff and it's it's like it's so funny because those old beauty salons and hair salons they do not update their decor no, no. <laughs> they have all their like like you can date when that beauty salon was founded based on like the actresses that are like on their walls <laughs> it's great it's great so if you had to pick your favorite uh, Karishma Kapoor movie, which one would you pick? I probably Dilto Bagal Hey, I guess. Same. But I would, if you haven't seen Hero Number One. Oh, of course I have. I love that movie. No, no, no. I mean, not you, but like oh, listeners, if sorry. anyone listening to this has not heard it, this is very enjoyable. It's very totally fun. solid, very fun, super catchy songs. Nothing, at least that I caught or, or was held on to, nothing particularly egregiously dated about it, yeah. really. And it helps that it is remaking Bowarchi quite a bit, right? But, yeah. But it still, it works. It works yeah. pretty darn well because like evil in-laws or evil extended family members sponging off of rich person like that we still get that <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so yeah it's pretty it's it's pretty solid template done mm -hmm. really well I would say so I but yeah it is not Zubeda it really is not mm -mm, no sorry not sorry I, I think David Thawne's I think my favorite David Thawne movie would probably be hero number one tied with Judva I enjoy both of those films very much. And she's in Jodhva as well. And she has some yeah. very fun costumes in it. Like some really kind of like crazy. Because everyone is meant to be crazy yeah. in that movie. Yeah. R like Rumba is crazy. Salman is crazy. Both the Salmans. And Salman's comic timing in that movie actually is impeccable. I should. I shall try to watch it. I I, I yeah. almost watched it. I love Karishma Kapoor's um, Salwar Kameez in that song, uh, Tere Baap Ke Dar Se, in Hero Number 1, the white one mm. with the long sleeves. And she has her hair parted in the middle and it's slicked back. Um, and it's very 60s. It's the kind of outfit her auntie Sadhna Shivda Sani would have yeah. worn. Yeah. And that one is like, it's such a good look. It's probably my favorite Karishma Kapoor look of all she's time. She's got some very, to me, looked very sadna looking things in Hero Number One as well. When she's, yeah. you know, when she's a good girl at home, she's got the churidar and everything. She looks, she looks great. Yeah, she does. 
<laughs> when she's not being put in orange lipstick. Um, right. True okay. about us. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, okay, I think that concludes our Lolo episode. Um, our next Kapoor episode is going to be Boo. It's going to be mean, Bebo. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see my face light up. I love Bebo. I can't wait. I know. It's going to be hilarious <laughs> if you talk about Cushy, because that is my first memory of you. <laughs> I will be watch Cushy for this. I sure will. I challenge accepted. Is, I love that stupid film. <laughs> that is how I remember you, like almost like 16 or 17 years ago, wherever it was that we met. And I was like, oh, so you like Bollywood movies? So which movie do you like? And then you were like, I love Cushy. And I was like, is she for real? <laughs> Girl, what? Those songs, it's the songs that really yeah. have like, they have earwormed for me in ways. I, I don't know why. I can't explain <laughs> it. I just find that movie super catchy and probably, you know, I have seen it. I have rewatched it. So but like, good morning, India. Like, what a, what a <laughs> great, ridiculous song. I love everything about it. Redonkulous. I wish that there was a movie that starred um, both Karishma and Karina together. I think that would be fun. I mean, their little year of Netflix. Maybe it's in, you know, yeah, uh, never say never. OTT I feel movie. like it could happen. And like, can you imagine them as like warring sister <sighs> matriarchs That'd be or something? So good. Be fantastic. It would be They'd so be good. So Someone fun. needs to make that happen. Yeah. And let Karina them like shoot be... through a string of men. I want it. I want it. Yeah. I want to see that. <laughs> Karina could be the one that on the surface seems like the really mean and horrible one. Right. But secretly, she's really nice. And yeah. Karishma could be the one that on the surface just seems like so docile and sweet, but she's actually like Machiavellian. Love it. I would love to watch this movie. Yeah. And then at some point, there's like a werewolf and everything. Oh. And then maybe we can enter. A show. This is just me. Spending my couch money on a film. <laughs> <laughs> they can be warring sisters who are oceanographers and they have to catch a man killing shark. It's Love a good it. movie, Beth. Love it. Okay. Which Indian city is going to get attacked by sharks? Kanyakumari. At the absolute southernmost step on Love India. It. And there will then be then we can mishandle cultural tropes about the South. That'll be great. Yes. Oh, yes. That would be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we just destroy those. <laughs> and then we can have like big open mouth. Maybe throw an alligator in, in mm -hmm. case we have some Roshan special appearances happening. <laughs> that would be good too. A little crock for our troubles. I love it. <laughs> yes. I love that neither of us are involved in the film industry because we would basically make Sharknado die before. Oh, I would. I would. Yeah, I mean, um, we would bankrupt anyone who chose to work with us. <laughs> Not on purpose. It would just happen because we have terrible taste. <laughs> well, you heard it from me. I mean, you heard it from Beth, not from me. We do have terrible taste. Oh, yeah, um, but it's okay. We're proud of it. Um, so we will see you next week on the next episode of Ruby Ladies. And please tell us what you think about the Trimurti of Karishma, Ravina, and Sonali, and anyone else mm -hmm. who might want to add to that mix. Tell us what you think. Do you actually think that Karishma deserves superstar status or not? Um, and what and... is her, what is her like unique selling point or her legacy or all those kind of things that we have been asking in our superstar series and we can bring to bear a little bit here. Like what, what is it about her? My anything... dearly departed mother-in-law would say it's the four and a half inch heels. <laughs> I do always envy Jacqueline for getting to dance in flats because she, she too tall. <laughs> oh yeah. Kriti Sanon also dances in yeah. flats, by the way, always. Cause she's like, she's like five. Vani also, right. It's quite tall. I think. I, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Deepika is no longer the tallest among that lot. Um, okay. Well, we'll see you next week. Bye.